Oh, welcome. Good evening to everyone. Um, welcome to Kate, uh, who is our presenter this evening. Um, and we will be talking about Opsgene. So Kate joins us from Boston. Uh, and Kate, tell us something about yourself, who you are, what you do with Atlassian, and uh, what's your relationship with Opsgene? Sure. Um, so I am lucky enough to be part of the original Opsgene team. Uh, I was part of the acquisition when Atlassian acquired Opsgene, and I'm a product marketing manager for them. So I'm very lucky in that I get to work with all the really smart people who are building the application and improving it, but also help them to sort of market it and get the word out. So I think I've been at Opsgene or Atlassian combined about two and a half years. So it's been a really exciting journey. Okay. So then without further ado, uh, let's start with your presentation. Okay, sounds good. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day to come. And thank you so much for organizing this so quickly. Uh, it's very exciting because it's our first remote um, Atlassian community event. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to hit play. Oh, here we go again, this issue with the... It's because I have two screens. Let me just adjust that so that way you only see all right, can you see that okay? Okay, wonderful. So thanks for taking the time to meet us today. Um, this is, as I said, our first remote Atlassian community event. So you guys are pioneering this strategy uh, with Ops Genie. So very exciting to be part of that. Today, I'm hoping to give you a little background about Ops Genie, what we are, uh, why we're useful to teams, and then I'll do a live demo. Additionally, we just came out with a lot of interesting things at Summit. So I'm going to cover some of those. And then, of course, we're going to have time for your questions. Um, and I really want you to feel comfortable, just as you would in an in in-person event. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a different dynamic because it's more webinar style, but I'm hoping that we can get some good dialogue going. So Opsgenie is an ideal solution because it integrates with your entire stack. And so we really see ourselves being a good piece of Atlassian because the way that Atlassian is built is we really want you to be able to use the tools that you like to use and that help you do your job better and faster. So because there's a need for Ops Genie because traditionally, you know, a lot of folks even now are telling me that they are still using traditional Knox when there are issues, they have people calling, they've got call lists. They're also using a single email inbox. So they've got their IT dev stack, they've got monitoring tools, they may have things that are behind the firewall, they have cloud applications, they have traditional on-premise applications, but they're still sending all of their monitoring tool alerts to a single inbox and then forcing their employees to sift through that and try to determine what's important. And so this is problematic because it's very difficult to assess out of a box of like a thousand messages, what needs attention right away versus what can wait till later on. So Opsgeny sits between your monitoring tools, your dev stack, and then your operations teams. And so this way they can easily sift through what's important. They don't need to take that time. Opsgeny will take that alert, aggregate it from all your different monitoring tools, and then we will dispatch it based on source content and time. And since we have lots of integrations with chat ops tools and also ticketing systems, uh, we're able to really streamline that workflow for you. Additionally, we will record the entire life cycle of the alert, which enables you to document and report everything and then assess room for improvement or celebrate your team's successes. You know, a lot of times the folks that are working on these things, uh, everyone's behind the scenes and they don't tend to get the credit that they deserve for doing things well. So I'm just gonna do a quick Opsgenie demo. Uh, if you've ever attended an intro to Opsgenie webinar, we go in a bit more depth, but for this portion, I just wanna focus on how powerful the routing is and how easy it is to set up. So initially, when you first log into Opsgenie, you're probably logging in because you're trying to take action on something and thus you log into the Opsgenie Alert dashboard. 
So this gives you an idea of what the alert dashboard looks like. You've got the alerts here, and then you have the priority listed here, and then the team it's assigned to. So these alerts are all open and they're a result of an integration with Twilio. So this is all coming from Twilio. When you set up Ops Genie, the first thing that you need to do is set up your teams. So this is the teams section. These are all the teams in this account. I'm going to look at my personal DevOps team. So once you open the team up, you see that you've got the on-call um, routing rules, the escalation policies, and then the schedule down here. So because this is my demo account, I'm on call all the time. So that way when I am sending an alert, I get, I receive that alert and I can complete the demo successfully. Uh, but obviously in a real life situation, you would certainly have more folks on this list. Traditionally, um, people have set up follow the sun schedules. It's really quite simple. I have, um, weekend and then off working hours. All you need to do is click add rotation and then you're able to add participants to the schedule. And you can um, make this rotation daily, weekly, or custom. You can also end it on a particular date or restrict it to time intervals. So for example, maybe you would only like, you don't need to be alerting people during the workday when they're already at their computer. So perhaps this you create an off hours schedule um, for when folks are not going to be in the office and you want to alert them that something is going on. And then you would just click add and save that. So that fills out the schedule very simply. Um, and so the way that Opportunity routes alerts, it's based on source content and time. We're using the routing rules and the escalation policies together in order to route those alerts, as well as the on call schedule. So the on-call schedule is really the first piece of how your team is going to receive alerts. Uh, they'll only receive the alert as long as they are on call, ready to take action, as so long as your routing rules and your escalation policies also dictate that. So let's take a look at this escalation policy. This is pretty basic. Initially, you want to notify all of the on-call users in a schedule. And then if, it's, if the alert goes unacknowledged, uh, you will notify the next person in the rotation um, after five minutes. And then after 10 minutes, you're going to notify all of the members of the team. So that means even folks who are not on call, you're notifying everyone. And the purpose of this is to just make sure that nothing goes missed, um, nothing gets undetected, um, and you're only notifying people who are going to be taking action. Traditionally, most teams will then include notifying a manager after 15 minutes if the alert still goes unacknowledged. This way, the manager can look into why nobody's responding and why nothing's happened. You also have the option to repeat this um, escalation policy as many times as you like. Um, and then if the alert's not closed, you can revert acknowledged and seen states. So what that means is if I'm in the alert dashboard over here and an alert comes through and I click on it, I'm not going to receive any notification because Ops Genie knows that I'm looking at it. And the reason that this is, is the purpose of Ops Genie is to reduce alert fatigue and only alert you when you need to be alerted. So if Ops Genie knows that you've already looked at the alert, it's not going to alert you of the alert again. And then you'll be able to see that in this um, in the activity log all the way at the bottom here because I've been here for a while. Where is it? Ah, let me refresh. Well, I can't find it, but it ought to be here. It might be here and I might just not be able to find it. So forgive me for that. Um, so in this case, uh, we also suggest that folks only acknowledge alerts that they are going to act on. Because once you acknowledge an alert, it's not going to continue to notify the rest of the folks in your rotation. Um, so let's go back to my team. 
and we'll finish talking about routing rules. So another mistake that folks make is that when they are creating a routing rule, they forget to route to the escalation. So if you don't route to the escalation, it's not the alert's not going to escalate. It's just going to notify who you've selected. So in this case, uh, again, in the spirit of reducing alert fatigue, we've got when a P4 or P5 alert comes through, so any priority less than moderate, you're not going to um, notify anyone. This is because typically P4s and P5s are informational in nature, and you do want to have a record of them, but you don't necessarily want to wake somebody up in the middle of an on-call shift for something that's just informational. So in this case, it will route to no one. This means Opsgenia will keep a record of it and you'll be able to refer to that, but you're not going to necessarily um, have to be bothering people in the middle of the night for no reason. So the next thing that you will do, I'm going to just quickly show you the integrations in interface, is every integration is connected to a team. And that's how you determine who's supposed to take action when something goes wrong or an alert comes through for that particular integration. And so this is our integration interface here. You see I have Jira software, Jira service desk set up. Um, what we're gonna do now is I'm just going to show you quickly what the Jira software setup looks like. Um, I know that a lot of folks are using that and it's quite similar uh, between Jira software and Jira service desk. The integration itself looks pretty simple, uh, pretty similar. So when you, once you click in, you've got your little quick instructions here and we have two tabs. We have a basic tab and then we have an advanced tab. This is the basic tab. And the goal of this is to help you get set up as quickly as possible. So, you're determining how the alerts created by JIRA are going to react and how you want updates sent back to JIRA. So in this case, if an alert is acknowledged in OpsGenie, a comment is going to be added to the JIRA issue. And so you're mapping from um, alerts to JIRA. And then down here, you determine which JIRA issues create an OpsGenie alert and then how that behavior is um, as well. So if the alert is created in OpsGenie, you'll create an issue in JIRA. Now, the one thing that you would like to, you definitely need to pay attention to is the alert filter. So you do not want every single alert coming through ops, you need to create an issue in JIRA, because again, that's going to add to the fatigue and it's going to kind of be like the boy who cried wolf. You're not going to need an issue in JIRA for every single ops, you need alert. So what you wanna do is map uh, based on priority or you have a lot of different options. You can map based on description, based on alert details, alert message, responders, source. You have all these different options. In this case, I've settled on the priority is critical. And so only critical alerts that come through OpsGenie are going to create an alert, uh, excuse me, will create an issue in JIRA. And then all you need to do is click save. Um, but since this is already saved, I'm not gonna do that. The other thing here is in the advanced tab, you have a lot more options for customization. So if it's easy for, easier for you to always have the issue key within the message of the alert, you're going to drag that in there. Um, if you want all alerts coming from JIRA to be a particular priority, you have the ability to customize that as well. And then if there's certain tags that you want included, uh, perhaps you always want the author to be tagged in the alert, you have that option as well. So there's a lot of different ways you can customize the experience. It just depends on your particular workflow. And that's the great thing about OpsGenie. Uh, for those of you who are new to OpsGenie, we integrate out of the box with over 200 ITSM tools. But if there's not an out of the box integration, we can pretty much accept anything that sends JSON or HTTPS. And then at the last resort, you're able to create an email integration as well. So those are just some things to keep in mind depending on what you're planning on integrating. Um, a common question that we get additionally is what about on-prem tools? So OpsGenie is only a cloud application, but we do have something called OpsGenie Edge Connector that enables you to connect with on-prem excuse me, that enables you to connect with on-prem tools and communicate back and forth between OpsGenie and those tools. 
It is secured. Um, we use TLS and HTTPS encryption. So you're not going to be um, making yourself vulnerable by connecting to Opportunity as a cloud application. And it's just something to think about if you're mostly using on-prem. So quickly, I'm just gonna make sure that my phone ringer is on because I would like to show you the power of Opportunity's alerting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these three alerts and create an incident. And so the way that Opportunity incidents works is you set up incident templates beforehand so that way you determine how uh, everyone is notified and what different pieces uh, you want followed. So in this case, I'm creating an incident manually. Typically, you set up parameters beforehand that would create the incident automatically for you. I'm just doing it manually so that way I have full control over when the incident occurs and I can show you right now um, based on these three alerts just to give you a little bit more of a window into that. So I've selected these three alerts to create an incident from them. Um, this is all manual. As I said, it's typically automated. And then I've selected the service that's impacted. Now this is all completely fictional, of course. Um, and then I select the incident template. And then there's an incident message that's automatically filled in that I have created beforehand. And then the incident priority as well. You have options when it comes to a, a conference bridge. You're able to use either Opportunity's native conference bridge, which is a video conference bridge, or you can use your team Zoom account. Now, in order to set up the Zoom integration, you do need to be the administrator on that account. Otherwise, the permissions will not be accepted and you won't be able to set up that integration. Um, but that's something that's really cool. I know a lot of our folks uh, really enjoy using that as well. And then you have a status page entry title. So that way, if someone working in your organization sees a problem, they're able to log into Opportunity and look at the Opportunity status page of services and determine if a service is in an incident. So I'm gonna click next. And then my team is the owner and I wanna leave that alone. You can also add additional responders down here. The next piece is to add stakeholders. You can create teams of stakeholders beforehand. I'm gonna leave this blank. Uh, because in this case, and it's just for demonstration purposes. So I've clicked create. And now I've got the notifications on my phone here. And if I don't acknowledge anything, I'm going to get a call soon. Um, so I'm just going to show you. I've already received the text. Um, let me see. I need to find my video so I can see that you can see me. Um, so I've got this text message here. And then I also have the alert within the Opportunity application. So I'm receiving a mobile push as well as a text message. And if I don't acknowledge it shortly, I will receive a phone call um, because that's what I have set up in my notification policies. So that's how quickly it happens. And then from the mobile phone, what I'm gonna do just to show you, um, let's go to the incident just so you can see it before I do anything. So this is the incident here. And so I'm going to update the priority from my phone. And let's refresh. Oh, and there's the phone call because I didn't acknowledge. <laughs> okay, perfect. So I've updated that. You've noticed it went from a P2 to P1. The other thing that I'd like to show you is this is new, we've just announced this last week at Remote Summit, is you're able to create a dedicated Slack channel to the incident. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to name, uh, adjust the name, but it does pull from the tiny ID of the incident, um, but you are able to customize this completely if you choose. So I'll do um, Berlin Ace Demo. Perfect, and then click create. And then I'm not sure if you heard that notification from Slack, but that here's that channel right here. So 
you see it's pulled the description from what I wrote and then also the title is up here. It's automatically added the five responders that are on my team. And then I'm just gonna, it's a little hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in a little so you can see a bit better. Um, you've got that this incident was created and then you have all these buttons here that you can act on. So I can add a responder, send a status update, add a stakeholder, resolve the incident, close it. But what I'm gonna do is just um, write something in here and then we will add this to the incident timeline. So everything that comes up in this conversation, you're able to add to the incident timeline. And that's great because what happens is it's recorded for you within Ops Genie. And then when you go back into Ops Genie, well, what I'll do here first is I'll resolve the incident. Okay, so now you see that the incident's been resolved and I'll go back into Ops Genie and I'm just gonna refresh. So you see the incident's been resolved and now it's time to create a postmortem. So I'll click on create a postmortem. And then once I open that, you'll see the timeline here. It's just gonna take a second to load. So that message I added from Slack testing has also been added to the timeline. And it shows you when the Slack channel was created as well as all the activity during the incident. Now, um, this is really helpful because it's all recorded for you. And you can, obviously, you'll be saying many more important things during an incident other than just testing. You can add those various messages and discussion pieces into the timeline so it's all ready for you. And that way, when you're finished with the postmortem and you're sharing that with stakeholders or management, you have everything here in one place. So for now, um, that concludes the demo portion. I'm just gonna go back through some different roadmap pieces with you all and discuss a little bit more how we see the incident management piece um, and how we see Ops Genie working with the various tools that Atlassian offers in order to create a personalized incident management flow. So I'm not sure how many of you were able to attend the remote summit. Um, but we did announce a lot of really cool things, many of which enhance our connection with the other Atlassian tools. Uh, so it was really quite an exciting time. So let's just go a little bit into that. So um, as I said, there are still a lot of people who are still using email uh, as an alerting method. And that can be problematic because important things get missed. You're putting a lot of stress on your team and it's really hard for people to be waking up at 3 a.m. and checking an email inbox for a particular alert to make sure that everything's okay. But incidents do happen, even if you're using sophisticated tools, and they happen to everyone. Um, actually, I have to say, I think I said this Friday too at Community Day, but I'm really impressed with how well the infrastructure for most of the major companies has been holding up since we've all been working remotely. I mean, I personally haven't had any issues with any of the technology I've been trying to use. So I think that's really cool. And it probably speaks to how a lot of organizations are really building to be more resilient um, and more, more able to adjust. So that's, I mean, it's pretty impressive, I think. Uh, so the cost of downtime, and this can go up or down, depending on the size of your company, is about $4 billion a day. So it's very expensive, it's very stressful, and what we're aiming to do is really empower teams with the right tools to be able to handle these situations with grace and be able to not waste time connecting disparate tools, connecting disparate teams. Um, for example, the cool thing about the Slack integration is that within a click of a button, since everything's been set up beforehand, you have everyone in one room at the same time ready to tackle the issue. So for the way that we see incident management with Atlassian is we have Ops Genie and that's the alerting an on-call piece. When paired with Jira Software or Jira Service Desk, we have that incident management powerhouse as well. And then status page is helping you when something goes wrong to be able to build trust and communicate with your stakeholders and then with your customers. 
So for those of you who are not familiar with status page, just very quickly, I'll explain that status page in most cases is a customer facing page where you can automatically update um, what's going on. With, you can list scheduled maintenance, you can list outages, and you can give regular updates during incidents. So that way your customers can refer to that page instead of increasing ticket volume and putting all of the stress on your help desk. And then we see Jira software and Jira service desk really being that piece of documenting the issues, managing the follow on work, and then ensuring that all of the um, processes are addressed and everything is um, kept up to date so that way you can improve it later on. And so this is sort of how we see the Atlassian incident management working. What we're hoping to do is empower dev and IT ops teams to respond to, resolve, and learn from every incident. And I think as we move forward with our roadmap, that's gonna become more and more clear to you. Um, we do have a lot of exciting announcements from Summit. So the first one would be the Slack for incident management, which I've just shown to you. Uh, this is great because you're able to, again, respond very quickly all at once. Everyone's in the same room on the same page, and then you're not losing that record, even though that conversation is taking place outside of Ops Genie or outside of an Atlassian product, the record doesn't get lost because you're able to add that to the incident timeline. And then in terms of the JIRA integrations, um, this has been coming for a bit, and we're really excited to let you know that you're able to integrate with um, Ops Genie and your other Atlassian apps much more easily. So we've created this new app switcher menu. Um, and then all folks who are using Ops Genie since before the acquisition are now able to migrate to an Atlassian site. And this makes it much easier for them to use multiple Atlassian products at once. We are working on strengthening our integrations with server. It's not available just yet. But right now, um, this is available for all the cloud applications. One thing that's really great is now you can link issues between Ops Genie. Um, from Ops Genie, you're able to create and link issues in JIRA and JIRA Service Desk. Uh, that's coming uh, April 13th. It's not quite here yet, but it's on the way. Um, and that really saves you a lot of the time in the context switching from back and forth. Another major thing that we announced at Summit is you are able to view Ops Genie incidents from JIRA Service Desk. So if your team is already very comfortable with JIRA Service Desk, but you'd like to add Ops Genie to your portfolio, you're able to work out of JIRA Service Desk if that's what you're looking to do, uh, with, while still being able to use the powerful aspects of Ops Genie. The other great thing that we came out with, which I think is huge, is the incident investigation view. What's really cool is that you can integrate Ops Genie with your Bitbucket cloud, and so it is only available for cloud at this time. We are working on making it available for Bitbucket server moving forward, um, and as well as adding other tools uh, to this feature. But you're able to link alerts and incidents to different, um, different code deployments. So the larger the circle, the larger the deployment. And then those red lines within this image indicate an open incident. And so you can see down there all the different commits that were added in this particular deployment and then the commits that were removed. So you're much more able to map between incidents, the connection between incidents, and then also the different codes that were the code that was deployed as well as the code that was removed. So it's much easier to go back and say, uh, and identify those connections, and thus you're able to identify the root cause faster, but also fix the issue faster. So now once you close an incident, you have this button here that allows you to investigate and then open that up. The only way you'll see anything is if you integrate Ops Genie and Bitbucket. So let me just quickly show you what you'll see if you click on that button. So in this case, this incident that we've just closed, you click on investigate, but then it tells you here. Before you're able to do this, you have to connect to your Bitbucket workspace. And then you just click connect, 
And then of course there are steps that you need to follow. Um, I personally am not a developer. I don't have a Bitbucket account set up just yet. So I'm not gonna go through that with you. Uh, please forgive me, I'm just a simple marketing person. Um, but I do encourage you to try it out. It's really cool. Um, and I think that it will be really helpful to a lot of teams. And so this kind of shows you a little bit more up close what that looks like. You have the services listed on the left, and then you have the timeline on the bottom axis there, and then you're able to really track what's happened. And then you do have the ability to switch between different environments, different deployment environments, in order to track down uh, those particular deployments. And then you're able to add that as a root cause from the incident detail once you expand that incident. So some of the really, um, what we're really trying to do here is empower teams to be able to fully use all the power of all the Atlassian tools together. So we're doing that by migrating all of the accounts that do not have Atlassian sites but have Opsgenia accounts to Atlassian sites. And then we've also strengthened our integrations in order to make it easier for folks to switch between the different tools and then utilize them better together. We've also include incident management in all tiers that are paid. So the free plan does not have the incident management features, but if you do have any of the other plans, it previously was only available in our enterprise plan, you're now able to try out those incident management features. So if you haven't done so, I certainly encourage you to do so. And so what we're trying to help you do is no matter your workflow, uh, the flexibility of Opsgeny, the flexibility of the other Atlassian products. We really want to help teams work how they want to work and then create an incident management solution that adapts to their particular workflow. Okay, so perhaps now we can take time for some questions. Uh, I have a question. Sure. But it's about implementation. So currently, we have an issue in our current software that we can't make a schedules, but random one. So for example, we have a team of five people or seven people, mm -hmm. and we would like to mix them up every week. So not that every Monday, the same person will have a schedule, but let's mm -hmm. say I will have one week Monday, one week Wednesday, one week Sunday, like round robin or any other algorithm that could mix it up. So is it possible to do it with that Opsgenie? Do you know about that or? Okay, so you're looking for Opsgenie to take the folks and then create a random schedule for you. Exactly, um, yes. Okay, yeah, I don't think that is an out of the box functionality that we offer at this time, um, but I do see the value in it. So I can certainly pass that um, along. Okay, any other questions? You should all be able now to unmute and make yourself visible if you have a question. So that should work. Um, Hi, Kate. Uh, this is Daniel speaking. Um, th thanks again for the very thorough introduction. Um, we're using Opsgeny uh, quite some time, long, long before the EU hosted zone was introduced and had basically all our schedules and integrations running against um, uh, the. Uh, the US instance of Opsgeny. Is there any uh, probably support based process uh, to move that over to the EU? Okay, yeah, I believe you would actually need to lean on support very heavily in order to move it over, um, just to make sure that it's a seamless transition. I don't know about any documented process that we share publicly. I think um, you definitely would have to work with your support representative in order to do that. And then if you have any difficulty getting in touch with someone, I can certainly um, help in that way. Thanks. Sure, sorry, I don't have a more fun answer for you. <laughs> Other questions for Kate? Okay, then I, then I have one. Um, you said you are working on server and data center integration, but what I could do right now is use your edge integration tool to communicate with my server via the REST API if I wanted to? Yes, yeah. So when I say we're working on our server 
integrations. Um, what I mean is we're working on strengthening the integrations between OpsGenie and then all the Atlassian server products, making them more simple to use, more out of the box together. Uh, so it's not something that we have currently, but in terms of connecting with server apps, you are able to use um, OpsGenie's edge connector in order to connect. And we do have, uh, for example, Jira server is a very common one that folks are using that integration for. Do you have some kind of user group or exchange place where we where you can ask other users if they already have edge connectors for a certain purpose? Yeah, so um, you could certainly do that within the Opsgeny community on the Atlassian community site. So that's one possibility. There isn't a ton of discussion around it right now, uh, probably just because the Opsgeny community is still relatively new within the Atlassian community. And then also um, Opsgeny Edge Connector is something that we've released, I think within the last eight or so months. So that's probably part of it as well, but certainly feel free to start a discussion. And then I can also um, put you in touch with some other folks who I know are using it at this time. Okay. And uh, where can I find a list of the 200 something tools that you already integrated out of the box? Sure, so if you just go to, I'm gonna pull it up and then share my screen as well. Okay, so here you can see the full list. That's um, atlassian.com slash software slash opsgeny slash integrations. And then you have the full list down here and you're able to filter it um, however you prefer. So we have 204 results. If you wanted to search just by monitoring and logging, you can filter that way. Or if there's a specific tool you're looking for, you can type it in the top and it will come up. Okay. Good question. <laughs> These are these are fully supported. So if I have an issue with something, I can, and I have a support agreement with Atlassian, I can basically ask support, is that working? Or what? Yes. So within the app, um, you'll always have this little blue chat bubble, as long as you're on a paid plan, and you're able to start a conversation with a support engineer, or you are able to, of course, always go to the community as well and ask questions. We do have documentation, but if you were looking for additional assistance, these are some avenues for you. Perfect. Any other questions? So, uh, last chance, going once, going twice, and gone. Thank you, Kate. That was yes, thank you. Um, and I'm hoping and praying that the recording worked out so that I have <laughs> demo part and everything in the recording. Um, otherwise, I would uh, write you an email and ask you to capture your screen once again for me. Um, yeah, no worries. Absolutely. Um, but thank you very much. That was very nice. Very nice meeting you. And um, yeah, all the best. Stay healthy and uh, see you around. Uh, hopefully Great. next year at a real Atlassian Summit. The latest. Yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Great questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody.